Welcome to Maverick Next Gen, my name's Chris and today I'll be doing part three how I use the Remarkable 2. I wanted back in November to replace this kind of thing, this journal where I had all my thoughts and notes in here. It was all a jumble, I'd have to flick back, but what if paper were given digital powers? I've been using the Remarkable 2 for six months. I'm going to talk about how I use a Remarkable 2, but in particularly how it solved the problem that I have had in the past where I've had loads of these notebooks and I've just scribbled things. So what I wanted to be able to, the big problem that I was trying to face is how to, I suppose, order my life, how to create structure out of my thoughts, my day, my, my work life, my family life. And with that, I just thought I'd be able to use this as a, a one-stop shop to be able to, to order my thoughts. What this truly has allowed me to do is to be able to track my past, order my present and actually plan my future. And I'll show you that today in this video, how I've achieved that. It's been six months in the making. I've obviously gone through several updates with the, the software, but I've, I've hit a sweet spot. And I think this video will be really useful to those of you who actually want to, as I said, be able to track what you've done, make sense of the present and, and create something that allows you to deal with what you have in your task lists, but also plan for the future. And it's almost like a, a living a living part of me now, this diet. It's almost like a journal stroke, diary stroke, notebook. It's, it's digital. Before I go into the video proper, I'd just like to say what my setup is currently. And I've actually added the DDVK hack onto the Remarkable to get the usability for me and the functionality is just like I want it. And if you want to see a video about the DDBK uh, hack, then you can see my video, which will be up here. One of the biggest problems that I had when I was writing down all my notes is being able to bring it back together, review it, you know, be able to reflect on it and actually create actionable steps thereafter. And I think lots of you out there would, would always have a task list, a plan, a to-do kind of structure. When I was just using notebooks, I didn't really have that rigor, that framework. The Remarkable 2 is a digital notepad that allows you effectively to write down your notes and also insert new pages and also cut and paste specific parts of your text and reorder it. Now with a, a notebook, unless you have a binder in the middle you, and you can undo it easily and put new pieces of paper, that is a real chore and a pain. Whereas with a digital notepad, you can insert pages where you want, as I said, but also reorder and you can use templates, custom templates. Now the standard templates that come with the Remarkable 2 are very good, but the power comes when you start being creative with your template thinking. And I will show you in this video how I've created my own bullet journal method templates to suit my needs and to give me a better efficient workflow. Okay, so before I get into the bullet journal methodology that I've implemented, I just wanna show, uh, tell you a bit about the, the background as to how I got on with the, the Remarkable 2 prior to, to implementing the methodology. Beforehand, I would just create many notebooks and start entering my thoughts and being able to just write anything without really much regard to a structure or format that I had. And with that, I started to create a backlog of like hundreds of notepads. And that for me was a problem because I couldn't really search or keep everything together, even though I knew things were related. And, and that is part of the problem I tried to resolve with actually thinking, well, let's let's step back here. How actually has has people in the past solved the problem of using a, I suppose, a journal, a paper journal, a truly paper-based journal to organize their thoughts and plan ahead? So I did a lot of research and what came to the forefront was something called a, a bullet journal methodology. So I went straight to the root and I found Ryder Carroll's book. And as it turns out, this, he implemented the system where you can use a journal, you know, just a, clear, um, a blank journal with line pages or, or dotted pages or whatever you want, 
With that journal, that paper-based journal, you can create a structure that allows you to plan and keep track of your past and your present and, and actually see your history and be able to move forward and structure your life essentially. And so I thought, well, this is going to be really good if I can apply this to into the Remarkable 2 because as I mentioned before, the, the benefits of the Remarkable 2 is that A, it's, it's paperless and so you can put as many pages, well, there is a finite limit, but as many pages as you realistically want without running, without the fear of running out of pages. But also you can insert pages where normally you wouldn't be able to. But the caveat being is that in order for you to structure and be able to track where your your thoughts and ideas are, you really need something like a living index. With that in mind, the beauty of the Remarkable 2, it, it allows you to do that. Now, I did mention that at the beginning, I have a setup with the DDVK hack, and the key, the quick key requirement for the, being able to have a digital notepad to do that is by being able to use bookmarks and the ease of implementation where you have the functionality to navigate quickly to a page number, okay? And this is where it sh the DDVK hack shines. So that, for the most part, is the reason why I've customized the R Remarkable 2 specifically for those features. I will now show you the the fundamental framework that I've used and the templates that I've designed to be able for me to navigate my my past, plan for my present and plan for the future. So let's deep dive into it. Let's start from the top here. So the bullet journal methodology starts really with um, having a living index. But in order for you to have a living index, you need to start populating your journal with information. OK. But the first way you start with your, your journal is really for day-to-day -day work that I do. So let me just um, play it back here. I'm a, a lead architect at a university and there are lots of tasks that I have to do and manage during the day. So my workflow is such that every morning I would go and look at my, my Outlook calendar and plan which meetings I've got and what I would do is I would put them in as an entry into the daily tasks and so for me the first step is for example let's go to the marker step one daily tasks okay so let me demonstrate how I do that. Okay, to the next page. So I had to create a, a, a template for this to be able to make my workflow efficient. So I created something called, it's called, I've called it the Bujo Cornell DMF. At the top, we've either got a work or my project. I can reuse this template in my bullet journal journals either at work or at home. So for the most part at work I never highlight this but let's just say today for example I wanted to list all my ta daily tasks that I had in my work day. So what I would do I'll go to work and today is the Thursday and it's the 27th and it's daily. So this daily refers to that um, top section where I had previously, for example here, daily tasks. Okay, step one. So what I would do is now I use this specific notation called that, that is a task this dot so I would say at 9 a.m. meeting to discuss 
operational issues. Okay. And then similarly, I go 10 o'clock meeting to discuss API strategy. And so I'll continue during my planning in the first half an hour of my day, for example. Now, the reason why you're like, well, Chris, that's great. You're gonna have a task list and you've got these dots. That's all very good. So that equates to my task list. Now, this, as I mentioned earlier, is a hybrid template because I've taken something called the Cornell Notes structure and integrated it into my workflow. This column here is actually something called for recall. But what I use this column for is like special keywords. So for example, I would highlight in this column, for example, APIs, because they're important in my in my field of work. Or for example, timetabling, because we have a student, um, student timetabling system. And, and this highlights to me at a quick glance during my daily tasks, what things I need to think about. That's all very good as well. And this section actually here, the line section is used for note taking in general, but I'll show you how I use that going forward. This section at the bottom is, is, is generally used for, as a summary section. But I actually have, have used, I can use this in my workflow for something called actions, okay? So really, once I've done all of my daily tasks so I know what's gonna happen during the day, I use this section to make sure that I want to get what I, what I want to do that day as in today. So for example, complete section on the high level design of the medical, medical school integration, okay? I would keep doing that X, Y, Z. And so one, two. So what I have here is obviously I've got my section on my daily tasks. I've got, again, recalling the important things I want, but ultimately this section at the bottom are the things I really want to achieve. So having had this structure now allows me to be able to quickly know what my tasks are at what what I need to think about during the day that needs to stand out and actually the the important actions that I need to take during the day so that I keep focusing on what I need to achieve. Now that's the daily task list. So how does that how do I use this daily task going forward in the day to be able to take notes and more defined notes. So what I would do in the next page so now, because that was a daily task, if I wanted to talk about some page numbers, page 44. Now, the reason why I have page number it will become obvious because I mentioned earlier about the living index. This is a good thing that I'll do here. Let's, let's do that. Um, if we go to this page here and I want to go book, I want to put bookmarks on. Now this is a key functionality, so off on, of DDVK hack that allows me to really make the most of the bullet journal methodology because what I do is oh, highlight that. What I did is I held my finger on the top corner and I'm gonna type Bujo method. And because that bookmark has got this text in it, when you go to the bookmark again, can you see that it's now got the Bujo method? So I will be able to, let's just say if I go to the last page here, and if I click 
on the bookmark and click Bujo, it will take me instantly to that page reference. Now you can imagine how this is all starting to form because what I have done is on page one, I have bookmarked the index. So if I hover on that, And what that shows you and here are the key words or categories that I've defined that are, interest me and I've what I do at the end of the day or during the day is that when I when I have time I go back to the index and put the page numbers in and that's what that page yeah but that's what this page is about okay so it's a sequential numbering of my pages but for the most part well let's go back to page 43 um, so what I could do is I'm going to go to the index and go um, daily tasks, I suppose. You wouldn't normally do this per se, but I'm just demonstrating this daily tasks and that's of May. And that was page May 43. Okay, so you go, okay, so that's all very well and good, but how do you navigate to that? Now I know that page 43 is that number. But because we know that there's an offset because there's several pages at the beginning that you need to have for your index and your monthly tasks, there's an offset. So these are tasks again, this bullet symbology is called a, a task. And I'll show you the relevance of that in a second. And then the Bujo method, we can go back to that. These bookmarks allow you to, to navigate quickly to specific areas of the bullet journal. In my case, you've got an index, you've got a month journal section, and also you've got a daily journal section, but that's for the most part, which begins at, let's call it page 43. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bookmark this and just put daily in. Okay. So now in our index, we've got the beginnings of the daily. Okay. And because that starts at page 43, it's just important to know the offset 47. And that's how you use the the bookmarks versus page number go to reference and the index, it all ties together. Let's just say for the meeting to discuss operational issues, what I would do now, so that's at nine o'clock, let's just say, I would put a recall operational issues, okay? And in, in this, obviously I will do daily, Okay, so this is part of my daily journal log. And so this section is about notes. So in the operation, this is just to say timetabling system unresponsive. Okay, that's a note. But if there was an if there was a task or action that I needed to do, I would say follow up. with system admin. And of course, at the end of this, I'm gonna have notes going all the way down. But the important thing is at the end of it, at the end of the meeting, there's always things that you need to action. And because of the structure, I can now say, okay, whilst there is something I can follow up, Could have done that copy and then put that there but what I could do more so is make sure that with George you know the person who I need to talk to and that actions means what you're doing is you're going to review your notes and at the same time after that or during it you're actually writing down the action steps that you need to continue forward so you go through each each one of your daily tasks during the day and what you can do is because this bullet journal method allows you to track your present your past and your present if you finish that 
you can then cross it off, yeah? So you know what you've done. And if you haven't finished it, there's something called, you can reschedule your task. And I've created my own methodology, my notation for tomorrow's schedule for tomorrow. Okay, so what I would do then is when tomorrow comes, I would copy that and let's just say tomorrow has come, 45, work, it's Friday and it's 28th. What I would do, so this would be daily tasks, Friday. So whatever task that was, I would now, so I've rescheduled it for tomorrow and it's my bullet point, so I would need to do this. And again, once I finished it, I could do that or I can reschedule it again and become make it tomorrow. So the basics are that this structure where you have your recall, your notes and your actions and essentially your daily monthly and future journal logs and your bookmarks really allows a powerful way of tracking your past, ordering your present and planning your future. And this is simple because I've been able to use these custom templates for an index like that. And in terms of the monthly, what that is, is a monthly task for me is something that you need to make sure that you do at the end of the month. And for example, what I've done here in April, actually, I haven't done this, so create a podcast channel. I still haven't done that, but I think the reason for that is it's, I'm taking a different strategy. So crossing it out means this is irrelevant. If I had irrelevant in the sense that I can, I can forget about it. And actually, if I wanted to, so what you can do if you do that, Again, the undo, the digital undo-ness of it is, is, is amazing. Now, if I wanted to say, oh, actually, Chris, you finished it, I would do that, okay? So in summary, I think for me, what this does is it really, the mark will do seriously give you the power of the digital world and make that, makes that paper-based journaling notebook that much more manageable and with that, if I go back to, sorry, if I go back to this page here, so let's just say on the notes, I made something on the um, operational issues, but there was something with timetabling. Because that was important to me, if I go back to the index and go and put a new term called timetabling, and then I can put a category operational issues, operational issues, page 44, then I know that because of the offset of four, if I go to page 48, there you go. I know the operational issues for timetabling. And of course I can circle that because I know that's important. And again, similarly with the action, I can put this in my next daily tasks or whatever, or a monthly so the other thing is that I can do here, let's do that, follow up with the system admin in the month. At the end of the day, I will review this and I can migrate that to the monthly log. So what I would do is copy, go to my index, go to the monthly ones. And if I had a May one, Let's just put May for now, whoops. But I would probably have a separate page for that. And there you go. So in the May, I would now create a bullet for that. And I think for now, 
I will leave you with that small nugget of goodness that I have been able to use the Remarkable to to insert it into my daily workflow. And actually, I've been able to use it in my, my family life too for the journals that I do there, what planning, what the family are doing, what I need to do better, for example, and the actions I need to take. And, and so there we have it. You have an index that allows you to navigate your journal and your page numbers with the sequential numbers at the top of the template. And um, go back to the daily, so 43, 44, you see what I mean? And it allows you to track your daily tasks and move them to the monthly and the future, of course. I haven't mentioned that, but let's go back to the Bujo method. So now you've got the daily. Okay. monthly tasks and I haven't really talked about it but you could imagine the future tasks being not so urgent but still relevant and you can migrate that to the future what that feeds into though is you still have to do the page numbers okay page numbers now the good thing about the, live, the living index is, for example, you know, if you think, crikey, I, I need to put a new page in, what you can do is if you go down here, you go to new page, and it inserts a new page. So, so you go backwards, and um, so you just rename it for your journal. You can put May 21. Oops. And then you start your new index again. So, category timetables 45, etc. Okay? And of course, one thing that you've got to know is like everything shifts the offset. So, if I wanted to go to timetabling now, 44, I know that's 44 there, but actually, because we've inserted an extra one, guess what? It's going to be 49, so let's do that. And there we have it. So, if you liked what you saw in this video, please smash that like button, hit my subscribe, and hit the notifications bell for more videos that will be coming about the Remarkable 2. But actually guys, what I would like to say is the next couple of videos that I will be making or I'll be taking um, you guys through is I'll be interviewing fellow Remarkable 2 users about how they use the Remarkable 2 and how they've put it into their workflow. And the reason why I'm so excited about this is because I'm going to be creating a video podcast uh, and also a podcast as well by putting some of the, the audio elements that I've recorded onto a podcast channel. So you'll be able to enjoy more about the Remarkable 2, but not only just how I use it, but how other people with different professions, different skill sets have used and modeled the, the Remarkable 2's functionality to achieve what they want. Because in actual fact, the Remarkable 2 is pretty amazing. It is a paper with digital powers. So stay tuned. Look forward to bringing you more content for this channel. And again, hit that like button and if you've got any comments about what you want to see or anything else about the Remarkable 2 that you would like to know about, please put it in the comments below.